Hey, let me be honest with you, family. There's a force that's truly holding you back. What is that force? It's you, not them, it's you. What do you mean, ED? I'm so glad that you asked me. Today's episode is entitled, How to Manage Limiting Beliefs as a Project Manager. Again, how to limit it <laughs> how to manage limited beliefs as a project manager. Listen, I have a seven point framework after the seven points I'm out. I'm probably going to throw in a bonus today because I'm feeling great. Um, if you don't know me by now, I go by the name of ED for all you smart and intelligent folks out there. That just simply means it. So I was just thinking, I was having a conversation with a friend and what they were explaining to me, it, it just made me think about this video today. The reason why it made me think about the video is it it made me realize that even in just outside of project management, we all we put limited beliefs on ourselves. What are those? What are limited beliefs? Limited beliefs are the stories that we tell ourselves. Limited beliefs are the beliefs that we believe we can achieve more than we can. Limited beliefs are even more bigger than ourselves. And so we since we see the goal or the milestone or the opportunity bigger than ourselves, we feel that we don't have the grace or we don't have the visibility or we don't have the team in order to get into that particular opportunity. As I said, I'm going to unpack these seven. It's, it's a little bit different. I'm going to throw in that bonus. So let's get to work. First point, story reframing. Listen, Project managers have to understand that we have to reframe the negative beliefs into positives, basically by empowering our thoughts. What does that look like? Well, it looks like, oh, I can't handle this project. I don't have the skill set. I can't, I won't be able to lead this project because I don't have the right team. I don't have the right people around me. Now, let me be honest, because I understand I have some uh, amazing people in the family and they're going to say, ED, I, I've worked with stakeholders and they were just, it just, you know, they just didn't want to do it. You're right. They didn't want to do what was right. And I get that and I understand that. But what I want to share with you, family, I don't want that to get in the way of your exceptionalness. I don't want that to get in the way of your greatness. A lot of times, even myself, I'm guilty of it. See, see, sometimes people that talk in this this way, they don't want to talk about some of the trials and tribulations that they go through. They make it seem like everything is all good, or as my grandma would say, like everything is all sweet, baby. But it's not all sweet. Sometimes you have to get dirty. Sometimes you have to go through the trials and tribulations to understand, and that's where we get wisdom from to understand a little bit more. I've struggled with this more, you know, more times than I would like to say. But because we're family, I can be transparent with you, family. We we have to get out of the, the, the mindset of telling ourselves stories that doesn't uh, align of where the direction and the directive that is on our life. I can tell you another thing. I'll tell you another story, family. When we were, uh, I was leading a project and one of the particular stakeholders came to me and said, listen, ED, I would really love to work on this aspect of the project. We were working with some applications and they were actually already doing it. I didn't even realize they were helping one of their coworkers. And I said, uh, do you understand what the application? They were like, yeah, I know how to do it and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, awesome. And then they said, well, I'm actually assisting the person that's doing it. And I said, wow, that's interesting. I said, well, if you're assisting them, then you should be able to go ahead and move forward. Well, they won't let me. Who is they? See, that's why I always say, family, it's not them, it's you. The reason why I say it's, it's not them, it's you, is because if they're not letting you in, then there's always alternative routes to get to the outcome that you want. So, family, we have to be cognizant on the stories that we tell ourselves as project managers. Forget the title of project managers. Just as a human being, we have to be cognizant of that because if we keep telling ourselves a story over and over again, eventually we're going to start to believe that story that it's not possible and I don't know about you, but maybe maybe it's just maybe I'm a little bit different, but I know I'm not alone in this. Leave a comment if you if you if you're with me. We can do this. But there's going to require some work. But skills are not always going to be there and because they're not there. We have to figure out what that skill set is to be great. Let me move on. I don't want to milk that too much longer. Point number 2, self-awareness. Listen, family. You know, we have to be self-aware of what we're saying. Um, I, you know, one of the things that frustrates me as a, as a project manager, when someone say, oh, I, I can't do that. Well, what do you mean you can't do that? Or even as I've heard project managers tell me directly, I, I just can't do that. I'm not a good leader. You know, I'm, I'm better. I'm a better manager of just managing the task than, Hey, listen, yes. How did you become a good manager? I remember this story that uh, was shared and I have to look it up again, but I'm going to share it at a very high level where 
um, they were looking at, at at relationships and and one of the things is is one of the guys said hey you know uh, the reason why uh, I haven't had a successful relationship because I haven't seen that modeled in my life in my home life or or some of my friends and family and then it got me thinking I'm like hmm that's interesting because when you look at the success of that what that person had that person was very successful in a business state and then you start asking well how did you become successful in business and you didn't have the same things that you just mentioned meaning you didn't have a model you didn't have you didn't have people around you to impress upon you of of becoming a great business person so that's why it, it, it let me know going back to the very first point of story reframing you we have to make sure we reframe those stories so we have to be self-aware in order to reframe those actual stories stories because all it takes is a skill set. It may take you longer than maybe what you were expecting because you may have seen someone that walked into the opportunity, but you don't know their backstory. One of the things that frustrates me as a project manager is that they don't understand that this is a, it's almost like a stair, it's a, almost a, like a staircase. Each step gives you an opportunity uh, to get better at each moment. See, sometimes people catch you at the top of the stairs or maybe at the middle of the stairs and then they place their own story on you as like, well, hey I can't do that you know you're you're I'm, you're different it's, it's it's I'm not like you and and all of these things but it's a story that they're telling themselves not knowing that they don't understand I started from ground zero I started from step one just like you let's move on to point number three goal setting listen family having the ability to set clear achievable project goals really in anything allows you to have a sense of directive and direction and this allows you to, you know, really counter some of the limited beliefs that you have, whether it's leading your project, whether it's, it's dealing with, you know, uh, stakeholders that are not really, you know, being aligned with you. Understand that having a goal, meaning a destination. But what I love is, is that during the don't get so caught up in the destination that you lose focus, that you lose thought and lose energy during the journey. Hey, I'll be honest with you, family. I've been doing this. I don't know what number of video this is, family, but I keep going. The reason why I keep going, because I know there's somebody out there that needs this. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the one that needs this. And it's just this is just my therapy. But so come come and sit with me in my therapy session as I continue to deliver. Let's move on to point number four, continuous learning. Listen, having the ability to, to embrace a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset and continually finding not shiny objects, but ways that you can look at, be able to uh, obtain knowledge and watch this family and then apply that knowledge that you learn. Listen, when I started on this journey, I started, oh my, uh, man, I started reading everything. The first book that started me on the personal journey aspect was Think and Grow Rich. I think that's a classic by Napoleon Hill. And I, I then I just started devouring books and books. What I realized though, even though I was getting all this information, how was I using it? Meaning, how was I applying it? So with you being able to have, being able, being a student, I, I like to remix that. Don't be a student, be an applied student. Meaning, when you learn something, go and test it out. Go and apply it because when you apply it, you see if the information that you read or you study is apt. Uh, that is applicable to what the situation is. You know, this uh, one, of, one of my mentors shared something with me and that kind of just changed uh, another way of how I look at um, my continuous learning process. He said, listen, when you buy a course or you go in and, and, and go and read something or, or any information that you're, you're learning, make sure that it's aligned for where you're stuck at. Ooh, I like that. Because what he was saying to me was is that don't go out there and just read all this information and don't take the information and apply it to the problem that you're facing because all that is is just information. There's In this day and age, there's, there's more information than people actually applying the information. Let's move on to point number five. One of my favorites, coaching and mentor. Being able to engage mentors and coaches, they really provide you guidance and support that allows you to overcome those limited beliefs. I got some amazing mentors and coaches out there 
parent along the way that has really helped me in my journey. They were able to see around the corner when I couldn't see. They were able to be my eyes and ears when I just felt like this, I, I can't do this. And I don't even like saying I can't. I was just like, man, that's not for me. Maybe I need to do something different. They was like, no, that is for you. I need you to go ahead and do it. There was a story that I, um, that it was a very high level story about Warren Sapp where, uh, he was a he was a tight end and the coach wanted to move him to defensive line and he was like no I don't I don't know anything about that position I don't even want to do that but when he failed to realize that coach was able to see around the corner and uh, and as you know Warren Sapp became one of the best at that position if not the best. And it was all about his ability to trust in his coach, to trust in his mentor. Maybe at the time he wasn't feeling it, but eventually he understood that, hey, let me see if this works. And that's what we have to do, family. Let, let's go and test it out. Don't try it. Because, you know, we, we have a lot of people out here that will try something instead of testing. Meaning when you test it, you go test after test to see if it'll work. All right, let's move on, family. Point number six, peer support. Listen, Family, one of the things that I love about having peer, su peer support, especially in this project management space, is being able to bounce ideals and being able to bounce ideology off of off your peers, other project managers, project coordinators, program managers, portfolio managers, uh, because this gives you an opportunity that maybe they face that challenge that you're dealing with, that you're going through, and they can say something to you as simple as, hey, listen. I know what you're seeing right now, but it's temporary. This eventually will pick up, this will change, hey, and have the confidence in yourself because you're like, well, if that person got through it, why couldn't I get through it? So family, I challenge you to surround yourself with, with peers in your career that will allow you to give, that, give you that proper support. Point number seven. My mom would always tell me, you know what, son? Keep a mental success rec uh, record of the successes or the small wins, no matter how small they are, because you're going to need to lean on that in tough times. Mm. So point number seven is project success record. See, keeping a record of past uh, successes, but I want to, I want to park here real quick. Don't get caught up though in your past successes that you forget about your, 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 your future successes, meaning that you can get so caught up in the past that you forgot about your, your, your present and your future. I know one of the things I love is that I heard this, this particular, quote when you're driving a vehicle you look in the rearview mirror but and then for to glance to see what's behind you but you look out the windshield in order to make sure that you're driving forward family we have to keep a windshield mindset also while we're keeping a rear view rear view mirror, uh, mindset that just translate into being able to look back at our past wins but keep forward on our future and present opportunities last and final point make sure family you celebrate your achievements. Being able to acknowledge and celebrate those, those small or big or medium size, however you want to package that, reinforces the opportunity to break those self-beliefs. Hey, family, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I've been your boy, AD. Until next time, you know the slogan, I'm out.